INFP vlog in Germany. There's a lot of people in this square. So, I feel like I deserve the opportunity to explain myself <laughs> because I'm tempted to buy one of those leader hosing things to throw in the next video. There's nothing to explain. I want to first say the Germany trip was cool, it was for work. Um, when I always go over there, it's so much more slower paced. Which is a good thing. I mean, it's not its not to say anything about them. It's that I went over there with a group of Americans. We went over there for work and we had to go, you know, test some stuff or whatever. While we're there walking around, you know, everyone, there's the streets. I mean, we were kind of in a lessly, densely populated area. So not to say that some of the larger cities can't be, you know, busy, busy, crazy. Um, similar to what's here in America or whatever. Where I was at, I was more in the farming land and just a small, small community or whatever. The culture is just so slow paced. It's like, we're just so used to now, 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 now. And when you go over there, it's not that way. I mean, you, you sit down, you order a meal, you're waiting. It doesn't matter where you go. It's not just one restaurant or another. You order a beer, you're gonna get that beer in like 15 minutes because you know they they have certain ways about things and they don't. There's not a lot of pressure to give me now, give me now. And and as for us, it's funny because even though I enjoyed it, like you're still we're so pressured to all this fast-paced stuff of you know instant gratification that it would even we would sit there and as you know. Americans over there, we would talking amongst ourselves as in we're just what's taking so long? What's we were actually frustrated and I was too. And it's not it's in a bad way. It's not knocking them. It's just it encourages more communication and socialization. When you sit down, you're actually sitting down to to enjoy a meal. You're not just going there to shove your face full of food and then you leave and then it's you know the social engagement is gone it's just different and and that's the thing it's like it's just it's a calming it's kind of like a vacation in itself to where you just go and you're just you're waiting for something to pop out and go crazy but yet everything's just slower pace everyone's friendly and it's just there's there's not a lot of conflict around it's just it's really i just enjoy it mentally it's very good for me i believe so again it's Germans, I love them over there. Uh, they're great. It was a good time. So if you have the opportunity to visit different countries, if you haven't been out of the states or wherever you're locked into, um, I'd recommend it because it's just there's so much other sides of life that you can experience. It's just worth it to see that hey, this is not all you have out there. You can see other cultures and just how they react and how they 
you know, things like that. So, okay, so going into like the topic of this, this whole video's mess, you got Germany, you got Lederhosen, boy. And so the, the choice of topic that I wanted to touch about briefly is the use of filler words. So you guys have heard me talk about this a lot and it's, you don't typically, when you use a filler word, a filler word, and I, I found again some couple, couple articles to back me up because you don't want to fully listen to me. <laughs> I have to, whatever's coming out of my mouth, you want to, you want to look that up yourself and just, is Sean crazy? Sometimes I am. But no, filler words, uh, I use, I use a lot. The thing is, when you're talking and stuff, you don't necessarily know you're doing it unless someone tells you about it, or in my case, doing these videos, when I get to sit down and edit myself and just really watch myself back, I'm like, man, you are annoying. Like, there's, there's some phrases in there that I cut out, and I leave some in, but I'm not gonna leave, because I, I say the ums, uh, I say but a lot, I say, um, and I say you know, or you know what I mean. Those are the biggest phrases I cut out, or you know, words that I cut out of my editing, because even me watching it, I get extremely annoyed by it. I'm like, why do you have to say that like every two sentences? I'm really kind of into this right now because I watched a video that the Black Fence Cat made over on his channel. Uh, I watched it a couple weeks ago, and it was the, it was talking about, um, you know what I mean and uh, why INFPs say that generally. And so now I'm listening for it because I, right when I watched it, I'm like, wait a minute, that's what I cut out of my videos. I never thought about it. I'm like, why do you, and so he brought that up and I was like, that's pretty cool. So one of my colleagues went with me to Germany. Um, he's an INFP. He's one of the three INFPs in my real life that I know. Um, and so since my brain is now trained to kind of look for it or listen for it, I was listening to him talk and he said, you know what I mean? Like every three sentences, which I was like, I was like giggling inside. And I, I told him about it, which made him self-conscious, but it's just, it's, it's the fascination of like, why are we saying that? And it's, it's pretty cool to me just to see that. But a lot of, when you look up filler words and uh, things like that and the, why people say all this, a lot of things on the websites are commonly talking about, um, it's commonly saying that it's, uh, and my lederhosen uh, middle piece here keeps popping up. I gotta straighten myself out here. I'm a mess. I can't do this thing justice. All right, so I found some things, and a lot, a lot of the websites say that you, you, you come across as less, you know, less uh, smart, and it shows um, less confidence when you're speaking and things like that. And yes, in nervousness, that's a big one it, it keys on to. If you use excessive filler words, um, then you're, you can be seen, and, and that's the thing, when I watch myself back, I do, I'm like, man, that's, you're not even really talking, you're just saying, you know what I mean, like every five seconds. But it, it also does, because I'm not confident when I'm talking, you know, when, I'm confident when I write, when I have time to think about things, when I, when I write things, but when I'm actually talking, no, I'm not confident, because I'm like, okay, is this even gonna come out correctly? I know it's clear as day right here in this head, but from, from this point to here, when it comes out, who knows what's about to happen? It's about to get crazy. And I don't, and so I'm not that confident. So I'm going to sit there and use more of the ums and the, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna use these buffers to be able to think a little bit longer, to be able to articulate what I need to come out a little bit more clearer than if I just kept running on and talking. So people that are good talkers, they don't really, they can they can take that that mental picture and they could put it out into words a lot more fluid than someone who needs to think about things. And the you know what I mean, I, I look at it as when we use it, it's really just a genuine like care. And one of the articles I found actually justified that was my thinking about it, why we do it. Um, but a lot of people say you know or you know what I mean. And that's more of just, it's just a filler phrase. It's not really anything behind it. But with us, I mean, when I say that, I genuinely uh, am interested in wanting to know if the person that's listening to me really understands the nonsense or the, the craziness that's coming out because I know a lot of people don't understand exactly clearly what I'm trying to say. And, and that's just the thing. I'm willing to basically, hey, if you need, I'll repeat myself, whatever you need, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll help you understand, I'll, just, I'll do it in a different way because that's, I'll try different approaches where it's, I'll always, if I'm trying to get a, a solution to something, I'm going to approach it in different ways. So I'll first deliver it in this fashion, and then if that doesn't work, and I kind of see the- I have no idea what you're talking about. 
then I will approach it a different, okay, I'll, I'll take this route and I'll come around. So I try multiple angles, but, and that's the thing, it's, I'm consciously watching them to see, and if I see mannerisms, whatever, I'm gonna ask, you know, you know what I mean? And if I see the head shaking thing, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll proceed on and go on, but if I see that I'm losing track, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna try to consciously just trying to get them on board with the whole conversation because it's like I genuinely just want us to be on the same wavelength and I know that I'm not the best conveyor in that sense. And, and too, when it, when it came to speeches in school, that's the thing, it's like, I know this goes back to way back when, when it came to like any kind of speech, I didn't do my first like public speech in front of people until I was 19 in the military where I was forced no, it wasn't even 19, it was way older than that because I was forced to do speeches when I got a certain rank. It, it, it was probably around like 22 years old is the first time I was forced to get in front of people. And I was cracking off ums like crazy because in school, we had speeches, obviously in school you have speeches that you have to do for certain classes. This is 60% of your grade for the whole year. If you don't do this, you're probably gonna fail. Little shot would be F. <laughs> Because I was so socially awkward and nervous to get in front of people and just, I would literally just not do it. And, and with that, I never really exercised great speaking. So the more you talk and the more you communicate in front of people, the more those filler words can kind of go away. And the more self-conscious you become about them, if you watch yourself, if you play yourself back or you're with somebody who calls you out and be like, you, you know you're saying a lot of ums and things like that? But with video, if you watch yourself back on video, which generally we don't tend to put ourselves in front of a video extremely commonly, but if you do that, you will literally see a lot of things. And it's not, I don't look at it as a bad thing. If, if you sit there and you know put yourself in video and you say a bunch of ums or whatever, it, I know that you're sitting there trying to process deeply through all the stuff that's in our head. You gotta go rummage through and you gotta really, um, pull stuff out. So I know, I know the purpose with us and just, you need that stall time because we do, we don't, we don't have it just sitting up there just in a, in a nice little order of a nice little conveyor line of like just flowing out nice and streamly. And it's just kind of, we're just, got, we got to go open all these doors and go crazy. And what's this? And any has a whole bunch of this stuff stacked everywhere. I have, I have no idea. So I'm going to use, um, just to stall for five seconds while I go open this door and then get my idea out of here and then I can you know, pop it out. So I got, a, I got a couple of articles again that I'm gonna put down in the description so you guys can read along. I'm just gonna pick stuff out of here, but I found one of the things, and there's a ton of, if you look up filler words or things like that, you'll find, but I found International Business Times is one of the websites. It says, linguists call interjections like you know and like and um and I mean and a multitude of other filler or discourse particles that is an unconscious device that serves as a pause in the middle of a sentence as the speaker gathers his or her thoughts but wants to maintain the listener's attention. However, it would appear that such fillers, which have minimal gram grammatical or lexical values, just go along with the reading, <laughs> it's okay, uh, have infiltrated daily conversations to such an extent that they threaten to further damage the beauty, power, and effectiveness of verbal communication. Fillers can be overused, making the speaker sound nervous or otherwise unprepared. Absolutely, I agree with that. That is why I use them. <laughs> um, someone who uses fillers comes off as more informal than intended, creating a dissonance. Generally, younger people whose mastery of those own their own languages are still evolving tend to use fillers more than the older set without much recrimination. But among adults, the excessive use of fillers can sometimes indicate personality quirks. We're quirky, and when it comes to us talking, it's quirktastic, so I'm just saying, it's and quirktastic is a new word. I, it's probably in the Urban Dictionary, but it's, no, I mean, that's, yes. There's another one I got. And this one's more kind of explaining like what I was thinking. This one's from businessinsider.com. A few lucky people have the ability to speak fluently without hesitation. For the rest of us, however, words like um, er, and I mean are a common part of our language. Being slightly less eloquent doesn't necessarily mean you aren't smart though. Linguists have said those who use more of these so-called filler words are probably being more conscious of who they are talking to and what they are saying. Michael Hanford, a professor applied lingui linguistics and language, English language at Cardiff University, told the independent, people often use these words to be polite. Another use for filler words is when we are speaking about something deep or complicated and we're aware the person listening might need more time to catch up. 
that that again this is where my this really validates what I was really thinking of why we kind of use things like that just to kind of give them time to be like are you following me because it doesn't look like it but that's my fault I just got to be able to convey it a little bit better as speakers we are often aware if we speak too complexly the listener might not understand we use these items pretty unconsciously to help the person process what we are saying this goes for the person talking too sometimes you might be racking your brain for the right words because you're having a mind blank or you've been asked a particularly difficult or technical question Equally, you might just be making noises to signal you have something to say and your brain just hasn't caught up yet. <laughs> yeah, it's conscientious people are generally more thoughtful and aware of themselves and their surroundings. This shows a desire to share or rephrase opinions to recipients. Man, I am the worst reader ever. <laughs> That's all, I mean, there's more stuff, but it's just interesting. If you know if you know an INFP in your life, just next time you're with them, don't let them know because they are. They're gonna pipe up and they're gonna sit there and listen and be self-conscious about it. But just listen to them and listen for those filler words, especially the you know what I mean. Because again, I, I know for me personally, I cut those out a lot. I constantly say it. I, I don't think I can get through like a paragraph of talking without me saying, you know, or you know what I mean in my editing where I cut it out. It was an interesting thing that sparked my attention. So thanks to Black Fitz Cat on that one. So until next time, um, I'll put this leader hose and I'll hang it up. So next time I'll be in the normal attire. If you get a chance, check out Germany. It's really cool. It's laid back, a really cool country. So I will say Dankeschön. That means thank you. <laughs> it, it, I think they say a little faster than that, but I said it a lot when I was over there because you kind of, I know like three German words. Bit, bitte means good. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm horrible, but yes. Anyway, I will catch you guys whenever I make the next video, which I'm trying to keep consistent.